Hello, everybody. Hello. We just got out of another meeting, so I'm just giving folks a moment or two to to uh, join us. Couple adjustments here in the um, who's in it. Apparently the the signal, but um, but you got. A, I think you look got a nice necklace on. So all right, one, two. Trying to get folks pinned. Tau. Pinned. Okay. All right. Just right. I'll just wait one moment for Ms. Pence and then we will go. Oh, there you are. I'm here. All right. All righty. Are you? Usually when she, I'm not, this is not your job real well, but usually Sherry like moves people from attendee to presenter. So I'm just I'm moving folks around just so I can keep a closer eye on folks with their hands up. So sorry for the delay here. Um, whoops. All right. Okay. All right. We are recording and we are here yes. and ready to go. So I will call the St. Paul City Council to order roll call. Yang. Here. Jalali. Here. Naker. Here. Prince. Here. Tao. Here. Tolbert. Here. Council President Bren Moan. Here. Seven present, none absent. Um, please stand and join Council Member Tao as he leads us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which we stand, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Consent agenda items 3 through 11 are before you for your consideration. And the consent agenda item number 8 has been withdrawn. Item number 10 and item number 11 have been uh, requested for separate consideration. Is there anything else on consent that should be considered separately? Uh, seeing none, Ms. Yang moves the balance of consent. Roll call. Yang? Aye. Jalali? Aye. Naker? Aye. Prince? Aye. Tao? Aye. Tolbert? Yes. Council President Bren Moen. Aye. Seven in favor, none opposed. The consent agenda is adopted as amended. Item 10, Resolution 21-879, authorizing the award of a professional services agreement to cultivate strategy, to perform a study of and make recommendations regarding the city's process to receive and respond to non-emergency resident complaints and feedback. Uh, Ms. Naker. Thanks, Council President. I wanted to pull this one off of consent just because I thought it marked an important uh, uh, moment well, in our uh, audit committee work. It's work. continued to be a pleasure to co-chair that with uh, Council Member Prince, 
and to have Councilmember Tao and Councilmember Yang as part of it as well. And we are now at the point where we're ready to officially contract with Cultivate Strategy to start studying um, how we respond to constituent and customer uh, questions, concerns, and complaints in the city. So exciting uh, to have that happening and just wanted to not let it pass by un uncommented upon on consent. Council President, I think you're on mute. There's a little bit of an echo, so I was trying to stop that with my mute button. Um, it, we'll, we'll check and see how it goes, but um, I just was saying that I um, support the motion, the resolution as well, and as always, I um, appreciate these um, opportunities to stop and recognize that we are making progress on the work that we're doing, and this is, you know, progress is hiring um, help to do this, but that just shows that we, we mean it. We're backing it up with um, resources and a timeline, so I, I appreciate the work of the audit committee, and I am, will support this resolution. Any other discussion on Ms. Naker's motion? All right, seeing none, roll call. Yang? Aye. Jalali? Aye. Naker? Aye. Prince? Aye. Tao? Aye. Tolbert? Yes. Council President Brenmon? Aye. Seven in favor, none opposed. That resolution is adopted. Item 11, resolution 21-886. Establish, establishing the St. Paul City Council Legislative Advisory Committee on Reparations. Uh, Ms. Prince. Thank you, Council President Brenmon. It is um, with, with great um, appreciation to this council for passing our St. Paul Recovery Act and Community Reparations Resolution in, on January 13th. Um, that was the work of Traren Cruz and the Community Reparations Steering Com Committee. And today we have met our first goal of um, appointing our Legislative Advisory Committee in honor of Juneteenth this Saturday. And I'm and I want to give Mr. Cruz an opportunity to say a few words. The committee will be convened by Mr. Cruz, by economic development consultant, Veronica Burt, and um, Dr. Uhuru Williams, who is the head of the, the St. Thomas Racial Justice Institute. And we have a very impressive group of 10 other committee members who came from an outstanding group of over 60 applicants for this legislative advisory committee. So I wanna turn it over to Mr. Cruz who has been for many years, both a national and a state and local activist on getting, the, getting reparations to be considered at every level of government. And he had written the St. Paul Recovery Act within sometime within the last five years. And he approached the council and we were prepared to take this on. I also wanna say that by our action today, we are moving ahead as the largest city that is working in, in the United States that is working on this important issue for descendants of chattel slavery. So I'll turn it over to you, Mr. Cruz, and thank you for being here with us. Thank you, Ms. Prince. I also, um, I would like to thank the St. Paul City Council for taking the courageous step of, for addressing the harms that have been done to the American descendants of chattel slavery who reside in St. Paul. I also like to thank the city of St. Paul for acknowledging the injustice in for holding Dred Scott and military bond, Dred and Harriet Scott in military bondage at Fort Snelling. Uh, I'd like to thank the city of St. Paul for acknowledging the destruction of the Rondo community in any institutional racism that it has practiced since its conception. A big part of reparations is cessation or stopping the harm. And by setting up this legislation, Legislative Advisory Committee on Reparations, the city of St. Paul is taking that step in stopping the harm against the American descendants of chattel slavery 
here in St. Paul. The harm in housing, the harm in education, the harm in business, and the harm in our criminal uh, injustice system. Restitution and reparations mean, the word reparations also means restitutions, restore and repair. And the city, city of St. Paul is uh, leading that effort right now in the United States by taking this step with the legislative, legislative advisory committee. This is not charity, this is justice and economic justice and it's set, going to set an example for the rest of the nation so that we can start healing these wounds that have been scarring us for the past 400 years. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cruz. And, 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 and I wanna give my colleagues the opportunity if you have any comments before I move the resolution. Um, I will just chime in and say, um, doubling down on your um, gratitude and ap appreciation, not only for the work to this point, but to the incredible um, group of folks who chose to apply to serve on the commission. Um, looking through the list and trying to make recommendations was incredible. It was like, can't we just have a 60 person commission, which we know we cannot. Um, but it was, I'm really hoping that we can follow up with people who express interest in the reparations committee and find other opportunities um, to plug into the city and other work we're doing here um, because um, all of the work adds up to a better St. Paul and um, whether it's housing work, whether it's, as you were mentioning, um, Trainer and the uh, jobs and there's there's so many places where the justice intersects. So I'm I'm hoping that we can take advantage of um, a newfound knowledge of of 50 people who were not appointed to this, to this commission that want to give back and want to make a difference um, and plug in because it, it's an incredible amount of interest in this and I appreciate that. And again, the work that it's taken to get us so far and I look forward to where we um, where we're headed. So thank you so much. Any other comments before Ms. Prince moves um, the item? Great. So I'll move by, I see some thumbs up. Um, so I'll move and, by Ms. Oh, and Ms. I Prince. just wanted to make one last comment. Sure. To your point, um, President Brenmon, um, the, the 50 people who are not on the commission, virtually all of them said whether or not they were selected, they wanted to participate in this project. And we will be getting back to all of them and we, are committed to that. Um, the last thing I wanted to say before I move approval was that I had the, the, the real honor of notifying those who were selected that they would be serving on the committee. And the most poignant to me was that I reached out to one member of, of the committee and I said, you know, we, we are asking you to serve on the reparations committee and he said, do you know, right now, I have just arrived at Lakewood Cemetery to visit my mom, whose 108th birthday would be today. And she was, she had, was a, was a, a Rondo neighborhood resident. And he said, it just, this just means so much to me and it would mean so much to her. So with that, I'll move approval. All right, so moved by Ms. Prince, roll call. Yang? Aye. Jalali? Aye. Naker? Aye. Prince? Aye. Tao? Aye. Tolbert? Yes. Council President Bren Moan? Aye. Seven in favor, none opposed. Item 11 is adopted. Ordinances are next. Item 13, Ordinance 21-20. Creating Chapter 233A of the Legislative Code to establish certain rights for hospitality workers who have suffered loss of employment due to the COVID-19 pandemic to return to work with their previous employer. Ms. Naker. Thanks, Council President. I um, fully support this uh, ordinance and look forward to voting in favor today. Um, uh, to me, this is a, a really important step that we're taking to ensure basic fairness and security for workers who, who were laid off during the pandemic and who are looking to return to their jobs. Um, and uh, in, a, in a sector that was particularly hard hit in, in St. Paul. 
Um, and I, I just want to acknowledge we got a few letters um, in, in some in support and some in opposition, and I, especially from the Chamber of Commerce, I thought there was a really thoughtful letter in opposition. Um, and the concern that was raised in that letter was that taking an action like this would make it seem as though um, we were calling out employers for not doing the right thing or making it seem like, like all employers would not be treating their employees fairly. And I appreciate the point. It's very important to me not to be sending that message because that's absolutely not how I feel. Um, and I think it's, it's, I think it's possible to, to both respect and honor and know that our employers, by and large, do the right thing by their employees and also pass an ordinance that ensures that that happens. Um, so I just I wanted to be clear about, about that distinction in my mind, and um, this is absolutely not a, a statement um, against our business community. So um, I would move approval. Great. And I took it as a statement of getting folks back to work and filling up those um, those p positions that are um, yet to be filled in many ways. So um, I support it as well. Any other discussion on this ordinance? As I think I mentioned during public hearing, there's seven sponsors. So the um, future looks bright for this one. Um, any no further for the discussion? So I'll move by Ms. Naker. Roll call. Yang. Aye. Jalali. Aye. Naker. Aye. Prince. Aye. Tao. Aye. Tolbert. Yes. Council President Brenmon. Aye. Seven in favor, none opposed. The ordinance is adopted. Public hearings are next. Item 14, resolution public hearing 21-133, approving installation of bike lanes on St. Paul Avenue between West 7th Street and Edgecombe Road. And on these um, next three items, I know we have Jimmy um, Schumacher here and Ruben Collins, and I am not sure um, if we want to do all three presentations at once or if we'd like to do three separate. I know there's a request for a brief staff report on those items. And again, um, the installation of bicycle lanes is something worth noting and celebrating. So we're pulling them off um, or making sure that we do take note of this work. So um, whichever is your preference, um, Mr. Shoemaker, if you want to do all three and then we'll vote on them separately, uh, or if you just want to do them one at a time, we'll do that as well. It's your call. Thanks, Council President Brenmon, members of the City Council. Um, yes, I think I had planned to do to present kind of on St. Paul Avenue first and then on um, the two West Side flats. And it, the presentation is very similar. Or the staff report is very similar. So if, uh, that's kind of how I have it set up, if that's all right with you. Yep. OK. All right, well, thanks a lot for having me. I'm happy to be here speaking with the City Council for the first time. Um, so for this first resolution, 21133, um, proposing resurfacing of St. Paul Avenue between West 7th and Edgecombe, uh, implemented this September, September 21. Um, the pavement will be mill and overlaid. Um, there will be pedestrian crossing improvements that are kind of exciting um, in the form of uh, bump outs and uh, median refuge islands. And then, of course, ped ramps will be updated and brought into compliance along the project. Um, a travel lane in each direction will be removed if you're familiar with St. Paul Avenue. Uh, it's um, uh, two, two travel lanes in each direction and then um, on street parking on the outside. Um, and one travel lane will be removed in each direction and buffered bike lanes will be added in their place. Um, this is a project that's included in the project in the proposed network of the St. Paul bike plan. Um, roughly eight parking spaces will be removed for the um, curb extensions, but there will be no loss of parking as a result of the bike lanes. Uh, to tell you a little bit about engagement, um, letters uh, were sent to property owners notifying them of a virtual project presentation and public hearing today. Uh, residents were provided with contact information for project staff. Um, we established project web pages um, for the St. Paul Avenue uh, project, uh, had technical details like cross sections. Um, there was also a feedback form that was included. Um, so members of the public could submit comments and questions and then we also City staff responded to that feedback and um, posted on the web page, and it's also included in your your packet today. Um, uh, there was an uh, e opportunity to sign up for emails about the project. About 50 people signed up, um, promoting this, and alerts were sent to um, promote this public hearing as well as a virtual presentation. In the case of St. Paul Avenue, that was hosted on May 18th. 
Um, we also presented to the Highland District Council, um, and then just two days ago, um, uh, presented to the Transportation Committee of the Planning Condi uh, Commission, and vote they voted 10 in favor and zero opposed to recommend the approval. We also uh, reached out directly to the JCC, who's a major stakeholder along this project. And as I mentioned, just uh, to mention again, the only loss of parking is um, a result of one, well, two mid-block curb extensions between Davern and West 7th. Um, other than that, there will be no loss of parking. Um, that's all I have for you on this project. I can answer any questions if you'd like. Great, are there questions about this project? I think I was just down here yesterday going to, trying to figure out how to get to Hidden Falls with all the road closures. And um, so appreciate the, um, the improvement here. Um, and so there's no particular questions. All right, seeing none, Mr. Tolbert moves to close the public hearing and approve. Uh, roll call. Yang. Aye. Jalali. Aye. Naker. Aye. Prince. Aye. Tao. Aye. Tolbert. Yes. Council President Brenmoan. Aye. Seven in favor, none opposed. The public hearing is closed and the resolution is adopted. Item 15, Resolution Public Hearing 21-134, approving installation of bicycle lanes on Water Street and Fillmore Avenue from Plato Boulevard to Livingston Street. All right, staff report. Sure, Council President Brenmullen, members of City Council. Um, yes, I am going to um, just take this staff report for Resolution 135 and 134. Um, and I apologize, some of this will be kind of repetitive, but that's, um, I'll, I'll kind of move through it quickly. So these are two separate projects um, planned for September of this year. One is just a restriping project um, uh, on Water Street and Fillmore Avenue between Plato and Livingston to include bike lanes. And then the second, just, just a little bit further east is uh, a resurfacing or mill and overlay between on Fillmore between Robert Street and the Lafayette Bridge to include bike lanes. Um, and this one parking will be eliminated on the south side of both of these projects to make room for bike lanes. And again, uh, both of these projects are included uh, in the proposed network of the of the St. Paul bike plan. Again, uh, ADA ped ramps will be upgraded along the corridor where they are missing. Um, to repeat some of the engagement, uh, we sent letters notifying property owners of the virtual uh, presentation and today's public hearing. Uh, we created two separate project web pages with technical information like parking counts and cross sections. Um, we did also include a feedback form where um, members of the public could submit their thoughts and feedback and we did respond to each of those and posted them on the web page and included them in your packet. Um, we sent, uh, people could sign up for emails again, and um, about 50 people signed up for uh, project updates. We did a presentation for each of these projects, one on May 4th and one on May 11th. Um, we did reach out directly to Parks Department. Of course, uh, Harriet Island Regional Park is a big stakeholder along Water Street. Uh, so we spoke with our colleagues in Parks and Rec. Um, we also spoke with um, two new developments along Water and Fillmore. One of them is already built and is actually leasing now, and then the other one is, I believe, still under construction. Uh, we also spoke with All Incorporated, which is a um, appliance retailer on Plato and uh, Water Street. And then we did uh, contact the West Side Community Organization, WISCO. Um, in terms of parking impacts, we did do 13 parking counts in March. Um, and they did show low demand in each project area. Um, I will say, of course, to be candid, that those were taken during some construction and, of course, during the pandemic. Um, but we do uh, propose to remove parking on the south side of Water and Fillmore. Uh, in terms of the restriping project on Water, um, that does remove 56% of available parking. Um, we kept it on the north side after talking to our parks colleagues about the importance for on-street parking along Harriet Island. And I will say that the existing parking regulations that are out there now um, are a bit cobbled together um, and do not permit overnight parking. Um, and we knew after talking with some of the new developments that that was important. 
So we do propose to change the parking regulations on the north side where we're keeping parking to be more flexible for overnight parking. Um, then further down, uh, further east on Fillmore, as part of that resurfacing project, the existing parking out there now is for bus staging. So it's no parking, buses exempt. Um, and that's for um, buses that drop off, say, in, in downtown for events at the River Center or the XL and then stage there across the river on, on the West Side Flats area. Um, we do, we are removing some of that parking on the south side, but we are replacing it um, uh, for the most part on the north side where we're keeping parking. And so for that project, an estimated net loss of three bus parking spaces um, will be the result. So I'm happy to answer, answer any other questions. Are there questions? Great. And this area is really becoming a bike hub um, and also a um, now I'm like a lime and, and a lift or bird hub as well. If you go down by Harriet Island, man, um, that is the place to pick up one of those. But these these connections along with the Pyram Trail are really um, adding up to some connectivity down there. So I will be supporting this. Um, any other discussion? Seeing none, Ms. Naker moves to close the public hearing and approve. Roll call. Yang? Aye. Jalali? Aye. Naker? Aye. Prince? Aye. Tal? Aye. Tolbert? Yes. Council President Bren Moen? Aye. Seven in favor, none opposed. The public hearing is closed and that resolution is adopted. Item 16, resolution public hearing 21-135, approving installation of bicycle lanes on Fillmore Avenue from Robert Street to East Lafayette Frontage Road. All right, and we did get a staff report on this item in combination with the one in advance. As such, Ms. Naker would move to close the public hearing and approve. Any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, roll call. Yang? Aye. Jalali? Aye. Naker? Aye. Prince? Aye. Tao? Aye. Tolbert? Yes. Council President Brenmon? Aye. Seven in favor, none opposed. The public hearing is closed and that resolution is adopted. Item 17, resolution public hearing 21-136, approving the application of Big River Pizza for a sound level variance in order to present amplified music for songs to fill the air series, June 26, July 10, July 24, August 14, August 28, September 4, September 18, and October 2, 2021 at the St. Paul Farmers Market. All right, um, and this is a sound level variance. A public hearing was held virtually. Um, as such, Ms. Naker would move to close the public hearing and approve. Um, Ms. Naker. Thanks, Council President. Just a, a quick note of thanks to Steve Lott at Big River Pizza for always coming up with new and ingenious ways of bringing life and activity to downtown. This is um, just the latest example, and it's, it's really exciting to see the series of events rolling out in the summer when we want people to be coming back to all of our neighborhoods, including downtown. So thanks to him. Great. Any other discussion on the motion? Seeing none, roll call. Yang? Aye. Jalali? Aye. Naker? Aye. Prince? Aye. Tao? Aye. Tolbert? Yes. Council President Bren Moen? Aye. Seven in favor, none opposed. The public hearing is closed and that resolution is adopted. Item 18, Resolution Public Hearing 21-137, approving the application of CoMotion Center for Movement for a sound level variance in order to present live amplified sound on June 26, 2021 at 655 Fairview Avenue North. Um, this item was a public hearing that was held virtually. There's comments um, on in the Legistar attached. Um, as such, Ms. Jalali would move to close the public hearing and approve uh, any discussion on that motion. Seeing none, roll call. Yang? Aye. Jalali? Aye. Naker? Aye. Prince? Aye. Tao? Aye. Tolbert? Yes. Council President Bren Moen? Aye. Seven in favor, none opposed. The public hearing is closed and the resolution is adopted. 
Item 19, Resolution Public Hearing 21-138, approving the application of the University of St. Thomas for a sound level variance in order to present amplified sound on June 30, 2021 at the O'Shaughnessy Stadium, 2115 Summit Avenue. All right, and this uh, is a public hearing that's been held virtually. There's comments submitted online and over the phone. Um, as such, Ms. Jalali moves to close the public hearing and approve. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, roll call. Yang? Aye. Jalali? Aye. Naker? Aye. Prince? Aye. Tao? Aye. Tolbert? Yes. Council President Brenmon? Aye. Seven, seven in favor, none opposed. The public hearing is closed and that resolution is adopted. Item 20, resolution public hearing 21-139, approving the petition of Carl Ebert to vacate portions of Gordon Avenue and Blake Avenue abutting Gordon Square and Block 39 within the St. Anthony Park flat. All right, and I'm looking to Ms. Uh, Jalali. This is a public hearing that we've held virtually. Are you looking for a staff report on this item? Um, no, actually, I believe we can just close the public hearing and approve. All right, there's a motion. Any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, roll call. Yang? Aye. Jalali? Aye. Naker? Aye. Prince? Aye. Tao? Aye. Tolbert? Yeah. Yes. Council President Brenmon. Aye. Seven in favor, none opposed. The public hearing is closed and the resolution is adopted. Item 21, resolution public hearing 21-140, approving the application of the Minnesota United FC for a sound level variance in order to present amplified sound on June 23, 2021, within the street and the beer garden area at Alliance Field, 400 Snelling Avenue North. Great. It's good to see this thing coming back to life. Um, this has been a public hearing held virtually. Um, as such, Mr. Tao would move to close the public hearing and approve. Any comments on that motion? Mr. Tao? Nope. Roll call. Yang? Aye. Jalali? Aye. Naker? Aye. Prince? Aye. Tao? Aye. Tolbert? Yes. Council President Brenmon? Aye. Seven in favor, none opposed. The public hearing is closed and the resolution is adopted. Item 22, resolution public hearing 21-143, authorizing the police department to accept and amend the 2021 special fund budget and add on an activity for the auto theft prevention grant, SWIFT number 194499, by the State of Minnesota Department of Commerce. All right, this public hearing has been held virtually. As such, Mr. Tao would move to close the public hearing and approve any discussion on that motion. Seeing none, roll call. Yang? Aye. Jalali? Aye. Naker? Aye. Prince? Aye. Tao? Aye. Tolbert? Yes. Council President Brenmon? Aye. Seven in favor, none opposed. The public hearing is closed and that resolution is adopted. Item 23, resolution public hearing 21-144, authorizing the police department to accept and amend the 2021 special fund budget and add an activity for the auto theft prevention grant, SWIFT number 194496 by the State of Minnesota Department of Commerce. All right, and uh, this item has had a public hearing virtually as such uh, Ms. Prince would move to close the public hearing and approve. Any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, roll call. Yang? Aye. Jalali? Aye. Naker? Aye. Prince? Aye. Tao? Aye. Tolbert? Yes. Council President Brenmon? Aye. Seven in favor, none opposed. The public hearing is closed and that resolution is adopted. Item 24. Ordinance 21-19, granting the, the application of Polai Builders LLC to rezone property at 385 Topping Street from B1 local business to T2 traditional neighborhood and amending chapter 60 of the legislative code pertaining to the zoning map. All right, and this is before us for final approval. Any final discussion? Mr. Tao uh, moves approval. 
Roll call. Yang? Aye. Jalali? Aye. Naker? Aye. Prince? Aye. Tao? Aye. Tolbert? Yes. Council President Bren Moan? Aye. Seven in favor, none opposed. The public hearing is closed and the ordinance is laid over to June 23 for final adoption. Item 25, ordinance 21-22, placing the classification titled lead victim witness coordinator in the unclassified service pursuant to section 12.03.2H of the charter. All right, and this is also before us for final approval. Any final uh, thoughts? Uh, as Ms. Naker moves to approval, roll call. Yang? Aye. Jalali? Aye. Naker? Aye. Prince? Aye. Tao? Aye. Tolbert? Yes. Council President Bren Moan? Aye. Seven in favor, none opposed. The public hearing is closed and the ordinance is laid over to June 23 for final adoption. Item 26, Ordinance 21-23, granting the Port Authority the authority to issue general obligation bonds to which the full faith, credit, and resources of the city are pledged pursuant to the provisions hereof and by authority of said Minnesota statutes, chapters 40, 469 and 475 as amended. All right, and nowhere in this does it mention that this is really specifically speaking to the EAB um, Emerald Ash Borer program that we discussed last week, which includes job training, something, tree replacement, and all sorts of other important things. Um, but it's there. And we had a very spirited conversation during the uh, public hearing. Um, as such, Mr. Tao moves final approval. Any discussion? Seeing none, roll call. Yang? Aye. Jalali? Aye. Naker? Aye. Prince? Aye. Tao? Aye. Tolbert? Yes. Council President Bren Moan? Aye. Seven in favor, none opposed. The public hearing is closed. No ordinance is laid over to June 23 for final adoption. Item 27, ordinance 21-21. Repealing Chapter 193 of the Legislative Code related to tenant protections. And on this item, I know there was um, some continued discussion and clarification um, sought by council members, and there is a request for a one week layover um, by Ms. Prince, but Ms. Yang. Thanks, Council President. Um, actually, I, I wanted to um, lay this over until July 14th so that we can keep having conversations and also hold the public hearing open for more communication from the public as well. And I do know we have a fifth Wednesday, um, so that's why I'd like to uh, keep it open until that date so that we can have more time. Uh, so there is a motion to lay the matter over till July 14th. I, I will. Um, I'll be curious to hear um, colleagues on this item. My preference at this point would be a one week layover. I think we need to get focused on, um, you know, getting answers to our questions, having those conversations. We have laid, held open the public hearing and I think we can continue to lay it over. My preference would be for a one week layover, but again, open to um, kind of seeing where folks are at, but I appreciate the, the request. Um, I saw Ms. Naker and then Ms. Jalali. Yeah, thanks, Council President. I definitely support the layover, um, but I do think based on our conversation with our attorneys today, I feel like I, I have a lot more clarity um, on some of the questions that I had before. Um, personally, I would really like to be here for the conversation about this, and I will not be here on the 14th. Um, so I would personally love to have it next week, but I will defer to my colleagues. All right, any other discussion, Ms. Jalali? Um, I was not aware of that Councilman Nicker, but I had my hand raised. Uh, I do care about that and want to figure that out. I um, think that with the fifth Wednesday and then the holiday that the choices are somewhat awkwardly between a week from now and um, the next available one. And so that was why I thought the 14th could be something that both gives time and also accounts for things. Um, and I was prepared to support that, but I understand the timing conflict that Councilman Nicker just raised. So um, would love to hear from other people, but I do believe a layover is in order no matter what. All right, so there's one scheduling conflict. Ms. Prince. 
Um, I support a one week lay layover. I think that there are still questions that I need answered and information that I'd like to get as well as to discuss this further with the administration. Um, for that, I think a week is adequate. I do, there is, we do have a meeting on July 7th um, and maybe that's a compromise. I think that's but a I, could, I, I I'm fine with the one week layover and um, and then if we needed to lay over to the seventh, we could do that. So that's what I that's what I will propose is is that we lay it over for one week, and if it's critical that we take more time, that we consider that next week. All right, and we don't really use full on parliamentary procedure here, but the the um, motion was for the 14th. I'm hearing support for one week with the option to lay it over longer. Um, so as we continue this discussion, just so you know, there's a uh, a friendly amendment being offered your way, Ms. Yang. Uh, I see Ms. Yang's uh, hand up, and I think Ms. Prince, that's from your comment previously that your hand's still up. But yeah, okay, Ms. Yang. Thank you. I wouldn't uh, consider it a friendly amendment. So if we think, Councilman Moniker, thank you for sharing that you won't be here on the 14th. Um, I'd like to uh, change um, the motion to July 7th then, which would be when we are back after the fifth Wednesday. Um, Mr. Tolbert. Yeah, I, under, I understand that everybody wants to lay it over. I think what Councilmember Prince suggested, a one week lay over, knowing that we could lay it over again um, would be a good thing. But I think having the, the pressure of having a meeting next week would be helpful um, for getting answers and uh, not putting off having those conversations for a couple weeks because we know we have time. So I would, even if, you know, I mean, maybe I'll support a layover next week too, but I think it would make more sense to do a one week layover and, and move on from there. But we can keep the public hearing open too. So people can continue to write in. All right, friendly or not, Ms. Yang, I'm hearing that there's support for a one week layover. Um, so we could take a vote on two weeks, but it will fail and then we'll come back and take a second vote. Um, I think that their option there could exist to continue it if we need to do that. But I also do think it's kind of a, um, that's a page out of council member Thune's playbook is keep the pressure on. Um, if we do one week, then maybe we can get things resolved in a week. And then we always have the option to buy ourselves some time. So um, I'll look back to you and say, would you like to take a vote on the 14th or could you accept the um, revised schedule um, as proposed by council members? Thank you. Um, let's take the vote first for July 7th and then see where the votes land. So you're not the 14th, the 7th. Okay. That's correct. Okay. Thank you. Um, so there was a motion to lay the matter over till July 7th. Roll call. Would that be to continue the public hearing to July 7th? Continue the public hearing and lay the matter over to yep. the 7th. Okay. Thank you. Yang? Aye. Jalali? Aye. Naker? No. Prince? No. Tao? Aye. Tolbert? No. Council President Brenmoan? No. Three in favor, four opposed. Those opposed are Council Members Naker, Prince, Tolbert, and Brenmoan. That motion does fail. All right, so I have a motion from Ms. Prince to lay the matter over for one week then. Roll call. Yang? Aye. Jalali? Aye. Naker? Aye. Prince? Aye. Tao? Aye. Tolbert? Yes. Council President Brenmoan? Aye. Seven in favor, none opposed. The motion to lay this matter over to June 23 passes and the public hearing is laid over to June 23. Legislative hearing items are next. Part one, the legislative hearing officer recommends adoption of the following resolutions as no objections to these recommendations were received. Item 28, 
RLHTA 21-219, 2085 Buford Avenue. Item 29, RLHTA 21-221, 1805 Cottage Avenue East. Item 31, resolution, I'm sorry, RLH VBR 21-32, 854 Euclid Street. Item 32, RLHTA 21-279, 298 Jenks Avenue. Item 34, RLHTA 21-232, 310 Lawson Avenue East. Item 35, resolution, I'm sorry, RLH SAO 21-47, 521 Michigan Street. Item 36, R I'm sorry. Item 36, RLHTA 21 249 817 Ottawa Avenue. Item 37, RLHTA 21 215 1234 Rice Street. Item 38, RLHTA 21 228 1190 University Avenue West. Item 39, RLHAR 21 45 Collection of Vacant Building Registration Fees. Item 40, RLHAR 21-46, Securing and or Emergency Boarding Services. Item 41, RLHAR 21-47, Collection of Fire Certificate of Occupancy Fees. Item 42, RLHAR 21-48, Excessive Use of Inspection or Abatement Services. Item 43, Resolution AR 21-49, Graffiti Removal Services. And item 44, RLHAR 21-50, towing of abandoned vehicle services. And again, the motion is to adopt these items. So moved by Ms. Jalali. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, roll call. Yang? Aye. Jalali? Aye. Naker? Aye. Prince? Aye. Tao? Aye. Tobert? Yes. Council President Brenmon? Aye. Seven in favor, none opposed. The public hearings are closed and those items are adopted. Legislative hearings part two. For the following items, no objection to the legislative hearing officer's amended recommendations were received. And therefore, she recommends amendment and adoption. Item 30, RLH SAO 21-50, 854 Euclid Street. And item 33, RLH RR 21-25, 1023 Jesse Street. And again, the motion is to amend and adopt these items. All right, so moved by Mr. Tao. Any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, roll call. Yang? Aye. Jalali? Aye. Naker? Aye. Brents? Aye. Tao? Yeah, uh, aye. Tolbert? Yes. Council President Brenmon. Aye. Seven in favor, none opposed. Those items are amended and adopted. And that is the end of our agenda. Thank you. Um, if we were in the council chambers, I think we would just stand up and give you a round of applause. Ms. Naylor, you did a nice job today in your favorite substitution role. We'll give you some, yeah, we'll give you some claps. Thank you. I'm sure <laughs> I re recall when, uh, uh, Ms. O'Brien left the Count City. We offered her to do the reading for one day because it was always her dream to do, but why well, John don't want to do it. No. <laughs> um, so, okay, so that brings us to the end of our agenda. Any um, news from the ward around the city that we'd like to share before we adjourn today? Ms. Jalali. Thank you. Um, I am going to lots of Juneteenth events this weekend, but one I want to make sure people know about is um, this Saturday, June 19th from 1 to 5 at Allianz Field. Uh, the little, I'm looking at the little fun advertisement on my phone. It says free soul food, kids fun zone, vendors, free walk-up vaccines by Cultural Wellness Center and Black Nurses Rock, housing and food resources, and free, 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 free admission. Going to be amazing. I think it sounds like it's going to be a great time. So I'll be at that and some other great events, but um, I'm really grateful for the opportunity to celebrate Juneteenth yet again and reflect on what that means for our community and the work we have ahead of us. So hope to see some folks out there and uh, get yourself to an event if you can. 
Thank you, Council Member. Ms. Prince. Yes, and um, there will also be a Juneteenth rally at the State Capitol and members of the St. Paul Recovery Act Steering Committee will be um, presenting a survey to people in the community about um, reparations and information about reparations to help inform the work of the Legislative Advisory Committee. That is also going from one to five on Saturday, Juneteenth. Um, I also have, let's see, at um, Ham Park, right up the block from Metro State, a little pocket park along East 7th Street, um, the Indigenous Roots Cultural Arts Center has done a beautiful um, uh, art, art piece called Braiding Our Stories Together. Um, it's temporary artwork that will be in that space where we also had the carry on homes a few years ago. And that is part of the Northern Sparks event. Um, and one more thing, join the Lower Phelan Creek Project at Bruce Vento Nature Sanctuary slash Wakan Teepee for one of the habitat restoration events coming up on June 24th um, from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. I believe that is next Thursday, am I right there? Um, yes. So, um, and that will take place again from 5.30 to 7.30. And with your help, the Lower Phelan Creek Project can limit the spread of non-native plant species and encourage the growth of plant relatives that belong to the place and are close to the hearts of our Dakota peoples. Thank you, Ms. Prince. I know I have, I got distracted in the middle of that by a passing conversation, but I know it's stuff that I'm very interested in, so I'm going to have to look that up. Thank you very much uh, for that. News from the wards and around. Um, we heard uh, Ms. Jalali and I got the intel today that they found the leak in Como, uh, what is it called, the Lazy River, and um, hopefully it's fixed this time for good. The pool has been open, but just without that feature, and that feature, if you've ever been there, is a fine feature. Um, so it should be open and up and running and just in time for the hot weather again. Um, so people get out and enjoy our wonderful uh, pools and uh, splash pads in the city and stay cool. All right, there's nothing else in front of us today, so we will be adjourned. Thank you folks for your hard work. and carbon monoxide alarms. Carbon monoxide is a gas that's colorless